Hi there, I'm Julian McPeak and this is my mare, Wishes and Kisses. She's a purebred Arabian and today she's going to be my assistant for teaching you all an introduction to how to braid an Arabian's mane and tail, both for the show ring and just for fun. So there are lots of reasons to braid a horse's mane and tail. Some of the historical reasons included uh, that they didn't want uh, people who were riding them wouldn't have wanted the mane to get caught up in the tack or the equipment that they were using. Um, you wouldn't have wanted your enemies in war to have had anything to grab on as you were running past. Um, fox hunters wouldn't have wanted uh, the manes blowing up in their faces while they were chasing the, the hounds and the fox. So there's a lot of historical safety reasons for braiding uh, the mane and tail. Uh, buggy or carriage horses, a lot of times their tails are still braided up in order to keep them out of the way from hitting their legs. Polo ponies are the same thing. And then a lot of times um, at stud farms and such, they might braid a specific horse's mane to sort of show that perhaps they were higher quality than some of the other horses on the farm. So it was a way to distinguish those that were very expensive or had great bloodlines. Today, we often braid our horse's manes and tails strictly for vanity purposes um, so that we can make them look pretty for parades or for the show ring. Uh, there's styles that come in and out of fashion for the show ring in different disciplines, and so we'll braid to match that. Um, and then there's also reasons for perhaps keeping a very long, thick mane or tail from tangling. You might braid it for a maintenance purpose to, to keep it detangled or to keep it clean. Um, so today we're just going to do a very basic running braid on the mane, which is a great uh, beginner braid for people who might just be learning. Um, in the Arabian circuit, they often use that for the hunter pleasure and working hunter disciplines as well as sport horse under saddle. There are several types of braids that are acceptable, including plates and button braids, but we're going to start with just a very basic um, running braid. The products that you will need today are some sort of detangler or green spot remover spray, some hair gel, quick braid, a damp towel, the bands that are color of your horse's mane or tail, a hairbrush, and then potentially a braiding kit. So the first thing that you might want to do is spray a little bit of detangler into the mane just to get all the knots out. I don't suggest using anything too greasy because once you start the braid, you don't want it slipping out. But it is sometimes easier to work with a little bit more of a moist mane, but you also want it to be free of knots. So we'll get that all out. Then you might want to spray some quick braid in here. Quick braid is a little bit different than the detangler. It actually helps to moisten uh, the mane without making it too terribly sticky, but it helps um, keep everything detangled while you're working to and keep the hairs down and in place, similar to how hairspray might. So we're going to work some quick braid in here. Uh, once you've done that, you want to make sure you have a couple of braids, uh, braiding bands on hand close by, whether you keep them in your pocket. I like to keep them on my finger. That way when I get to the very end of the braid, it's right there and ready for me to go. Um, and you might also want to keep a rag close by, just on the off chance that your fingers get sticky or sweaty. Um, that way you can wipe them off and keep on going. So every horse's mane and tail are completely different. Some horses have coarse hair, some have very thin and soft hair. Some of them have um, hair that lays really nicely, others of them don't. Wishes here, this bottom part of her mane has a tendency to flop over to this other side. So just to kind of help it lay nice and be prepared for me when I get to the bottom here, I'm gonna use a, um, a braiding clip just to kind of keep it hung over on this side and that way I can quickly and easily pull that out when we get to the bottom. There's also several different styles of a running braid, and it kind of depends on personal preference as well as the shape of your Arabian's neck and how much you want to show that off. Uh, there are some people that like to keep a braid very tight up at the top of the crest of the neck so it would sit very much on top of it. And then there are others who like to keep them a little bit looser. Uh, it also depends on your horse's hair. If your horse has kind of thick hair, it's going to be hard to get it to lay exactly at the top. So we'll just get started with her and see where we end up and if we can keep it tight, great. And if we can't, then it'll be a little bit of a looser running braid. As an Arabian, especially if you're going to take them into the show ring, even at just a local or an A-rated show, you're going to want to make sure that they have their bridle path clipped. Um, it, again, it's personal preference as well as style for you. Um, my general rule is that when I lay their ear back against their neck, I clip about that far. She also has a pretty neck um, when she's set up in pattern and a pretty tiny throat latch when she's in shape and rolling, so I like to show that off a little bit. So you'll start with a, a hunk of hair, probably about an inch or so long at the top 
of the mane right where your bridle path quits. And you're gonna pull it into three different pieces just like you would for any normal braid. And don't worry about the wispy flyaways, we will take care of those at the end. So you're gonna wanna start with your top piece of the three pieces and fold that over first because we're basically doing a sideways French braid here. And if your horse is really tall, you might wanna get a step stool and get above them, but she's not too bad. So you're gonna wanna keep this nice and tight. And as you fold the new top piece over, you're gonna wanna take a very tiny section, if you can see that, from the top part of the mane and add that in as you go. So again, it's just like a French braid where you add a couple more pieces, but there's no hair from the bottom part, so you're only taking hair into the top section. Okay, so as you get down towards the bottom of your braid, towards your horse's withers, you may start to not be able to pull some of these, um, these hairs in, and that's okay. Uh, traditionally, once you get your saddle pad in on and stuff um, and your saddle on, you're not gonna be able to see any of this anyway. So you can see that actually this piece isn't even quite long enough to reach and it starts to look sloppy. So we're just gonna leave the rest of this out. Um, and to finish a running braid off, you just finish it like a normal braid down as far down the hair as you can go. You'll wanna take a band that's the same color as your horse's mane. Try not to break it. And put the band in. Okay, and then for more of a clean finished appearance, you can tuck the braid up underneath itself next to the neck and go ahead and slide a band on top so that you have a nice clean loop up here to finish off to finish off the braid. So her mane is not terribly thick, so we could keep it nice and tight up against the top of the crest of the neck. Um, or in some of them, if it hadn't, if we'd done it a little bit looser, it would have come closer here to this muscle and been a little bit longer. So to finish off um, the braid, she has a couple of little flyaways, and we want to make sure that everything sticks. So we're gonna go ahead and put another layer of quick braid on it. If your horse has a really thick mane or tail or a really thin mane and tail that you're worried about uh, little pieces coming out, you could also use some hairspray. Like any type of human brand will work. And then I also like to finish off the top of my braids with just a little bit of hair gel, just to kind of keep these flyaways down. If you have some that are really stubborn and you really can't get them to stay down, it's okay to take a pair of scissors to those. There you have it. There is a running braid, which is very popular in the Arabian show ring. Okay, so generally when you're going into the show ring um, and you've braided the, the, at least the mane, you would also want to do just a very traditional straight braid on the forelock and then if your horse's forelock is a little bit longer, she doesn't have much of one, um, but the, you would then flip that braid upside down and sort of just make a little button at the top. So you would also wanna make sure that you do that as well. Now we're going to show you what a French braid down a horse's uh, tailbone looks like. Um, and again, this is popular in the Arabian show ring for your hunter disciplines and your sport horse under saddle. Although it is acceptable to uh, enter into those classes without the tail braided at all. Um, if you have a horse that is not super confident with you standing behind them to braid, it may be better to leave it unbraided. And of course, safety is extremely Extremely important so even if you are braiding you want to make sure that you always uh, your horse is able to see you at all times so you can stand you don't need to stand directly behind them you could stand slightly off to one side or the other um, and just constantly reaffirming and patting them and letting them know that you're there okay again so your first step is going to be to get some detangler in there brush out any of the knots make sure that you have a nice smooth tail to start with this braid can be done on any length of tail because it's mostly uh, designed to braid along the tailbone. Um, again, I might use some quick braid, especially at the top of the tail where we're gonna get started, just to help the hairs be a little bit moist and not be too sticky, but still be able to stick together for the braid. You're especially gonna wanna make sure that the end of your tail is free of knots because as you get further down the tailbone and start to get into some of these longer hairs, 
as you're pulling them into the sections, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's easy and clear. And again, you wanna make sure you have some bands close by so when you get to the bottom, you're done and possibly a wet rag to wipe your hands off if you need to. So the traditional French braid, hunter braid down the tailbone is gonna start as like any other braid as if you were braiding a human's hair, um, except for that the tailbone is a little bit wider so you kinda have to work your third piece in there. So, and again, this is all about your personal sense of style, um, how your horse's mane and tail, their thickness, how they are, that will depend on how thick you choose to, to do each one of your different sections of your braid. The important thing is to try to keep it consistent. So you wanna try to make sure you're starting with pieces that are about the same uh, consistency and how much hair you've grabbed. So this braid is a little bit harder to get started just because it is, the t depending on the width of your horse's tailbone, it could be hard to reach. So she's got a pretty nice tail for this. And again, you want, the main goal of this is to grab sections in your French braid that are even and try to get your braid to set down the middle of the tailbone. So again, don't worry about some of the flyaways at the top. We can fix those when we get done. Um, you just may, mostly want to make sure that when you're grabbing your hair, you're getting it all the way from where the skin start and the hair meet on the back of the tailbone so that you don't miss anything. And again, the consistency of the amount of hair that you're grabbing is important for just a neat looking braid. And you want to try to keep it down the middle of that tailbone. So traditionally you wanna go about three quarters of the way down the horse's tailbone um, because otherwise the, the braid starts to get thick and you start to have to worry about some of these longer hairs. So to finish it off, you would finish it just like a normal braid. So go ahead and start leaving the majority of the tail out of there and just braid your pieces that you were working with down as far as you can. Okay, so we're pretty close to this one strand being kind of short, so we're going to go ahead and take a band and just loop it on there just enough to hold this in, hold this on here. Okay, so there are a couple different ways to finish um, the bottom of a tail braid. And again, it kind of depends on how thick of a, of a tail that your horse has or your style preference. One of the options that we're not gonna show today is you could do what's called um, a mud knot at the bottom. And that would involve actually braiding all the way to the bottom of the tailbone and then wrapping the horse's tail around itself so that it forms a small knot or ball at the end. Um, if you have a horse that doesn't like its tail hitting its legs during a class or has um, a tendency to swish its tail all over the place and you think it might be better and would be less noticeable that it's up, um, then a mud knot is a good option for that horse. Another option is if your horse, if you're able to get away with not having a huge long tail here, you could actually stuff most of the tail back up into the braid itself. That's when you might need your braiding kit and some yarn because um, you could tie some yarn to the end of this, stick it up into the end of the tail and actually pull it and weave it out the top a little bit and that way you've pulled it way up into the tail braid. So the other option is to kind of just fold the tail on top of itself end over end. Um, and you can do it a couple different ways. It might be easier to do it piece by piece or you can fold the whole thing up once, kind of where your band is and stuff that end in a little bit so that some of the, some of the tail is stuffed in there some of your looser pieces from the very end. And then you can fold the bottom part of the braid in half a couple of times, depending on how thick your horse's tail is again. So once you kind of get up here, you're gonna have that rubber band ready. Maybe. And you would just take a rubber band over the end and make sure that it's gonna hold it in there. I would suggest 
that once you get it kind of up in there, you play with getting some of the tail stuffed up into the braid so that your finish is a little bit neater. And we're gonna wrap this twice just to ensure that it stays up in there during the class. Get it nice and tight. Okay, and once you have it up in there, again, um, we're gonna spray. We're gonna spray it with some quick braid, or you can choose to use some hairspray just to keep everything tight and staying in one place. Horses move their tails around a lot, so you don't want your braid coming out. And then again, if you have some flyaways up around the top, you can either clip those off if they're major, or you can use a little bit of hair gel and bring those together. And then I also like to just kind of pat some hair gel down the center of my braid, just to add some extra stick. And there you go. There's one version of a traditional hunter braid for your Arabian or your half Arabian horse. So today we just gave you a brief introduction on how to do a running braid for an Arabian horse's mane and then a traditional French braid down their tail. These types of braids are not designed to, to keep a horse's mane or tail from tangling. They're strictly for the show ring or a parade, something to make them look pretty. So it's very important that you don't leave these braids in. Uh, we recommend not leaving them in longer than perhaps overnight. If you're braiding um, the night before for a show, that's probably fine. Um, but we suggest that you take them out pretty quickly um, when you're done showing, just because they are very tight um, and you don't want the horse losing any of its mane or tail. So thanks to Wishes for being our model today and uh, we hope you learned something new.